The roller coaster ride of the markets leaving investors with, with whiplash these days. But my next guest says, don't blame the Fed. Embrace yourself for even more volatility. Joining me now is Chris Giancarlo. He is the commissioner of the CFTC. Thank you so much for joining us. You, I'm sure you heard Ron Paul at the top of the show. I did. Say all the volatility that we're seeing in the market. You can blame the Fed for that. You actually don't think that's true. Well, well listen, I'm, you know, I'm not so much of a, of, a, of a Fed watcher as I am a market watcher. And the Fed is a, is a catalyst, perhaps, for volatility. But so are so many other things. We saw it just a few weeks ago with amazing volatility, extraordinary volatility. Hundreds of points markets. up and down day after day. People you know, on the street are asking me, what is going on? Why are we seeing this? What's, what's and the, the word problem? on that was that China was the catalyst, that's slowing growth. But even that was well anticipated. There was a lot of technical issues that were driving that. But we're entering a new environment right now where when there is volatility, it's much wider, much wilder volatility than we've seen Why? in the past. Well, there's a number of reasons, but one of the key ones is one that's not talked about that much, and that is the impact of a lot of the regulatory reform measures, the Volcker rule, a lot of these uh, Basel Capital rules, have taken the banks out of the marketplace, playing the role they've traditionally played as shock absorbers in the market. So when the market goes down very far and a normal person might get scared and back out, the bank looks into the market and says something like, wow, AB IBM, you know, down at this price, that's a buy, I don't care what's going on, and they would jump in and get a bunch. Exactly. And, and now they're not doing that because they're not allowed to? Because their capital is, is tied up in, in capital reserves, capital liquidity requirements, ratios, a whole series of almost uncoordinated mandates that have been coming at the bank in the last few years, and they've just stepped back from the marketplace. But a lot of people are blaming the algorithmic traders, that, that all the quant programs that go out there, that they're the ones that are causing these great moves up and down. You don't think that's no, true? No, I think that's a factor as well. The, you know, the markets are so complicated, there's never any one factor. But the big missing piece is the banks as the shock absorbers. You know, it's almost the analogy I'd use is it's, it, the economy is like a car going down the road. And it's fine as long as the road is nice and smooth. But give it one accepted, unexpected bump and boom, people are hitting ahead against the ceiling. So you're the CFTC commissioner. I mean, as you watch that, do you feel like it's a danger? You've got to do something about it? Very concerned about it. What are you going to do? Well, we've got to, we've got to take another look at these rules. The, the, one of the areas I'm very concerned about is the Financial Stability Oversight Council, which was created in Dodd-Frank, was meant to, to serve as a coordinating function for all of these different rule sets. And I really think it's been asleep at the switch and not coordinating the different requirements, these different capital requirements that are constraining liquidity in the market. So you want to get more liquidity back in, basically, is what you just said? We need more. If we're going to avoid this type of volatility, we need more shock absorbers. We need more liquidity making in the market. What's so bad about volatility? What's the inherent danger? Because quant funds can go out and, and write an algorithm and make money off the up and down. Why is it bad? Well, a lot of people are, are losing money in those volatile swings. It's 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 just disturbing the price discovery mechanism of the market. That's one of the reasons why it swings so widely, because market participants cannot find another side, cannot find a price. Why are people losing money? I mean, if there are investors out there in the audience that are watching, a lot of them will buy, you know, the S&P index or something in your 401k, and you'll leave it. So it goes down 600, it goes up 600. Well, you're back where you started again. And of course, as a market overseer, my job is not to make sure people make money or, or don't lose money. People, that's why they go into markets. But to create, we want what we want to have in markets is a stability and, and a, a resiliency. And my worry is whether it's a Fed rate move that's not fully anticipated or whether it's some geopolitical shock, that that volatility could swing for a very long time. The markets won't have the resiliency to absorb new information. Okay. All right. Interesting stuff. So you're a commissioner that wants to loosen up liquidity, make more liquidity. What I want to see is a healthy market environment. And we've had a lot of shocks to the system. We've made a lot of changes in the market dynamic. Okay. And I don't think they've been well, well considered. Interesting. Thank you so much.